Genshin Impact has become the most expensive game ever made. $100 million was the initial budget for developing and releasing the game, putting it immediately in the top 20 of all time. But the costs didn't slow down, in fact, they ramped up, and a lot. The Genshin Impact team grew to around 700 members and staff, and with the constant expansions, events, and new characters, development is estimated to cost around $200 million every year. Which means by the end of 2022, it will reach a total budget of $500 million. To put it in perspective, Grand Theft Auto 5, released back in 2013, has now seen three generations of consoles, multiple re-releases, and the constant updates to its expansive multiplayer GTA Online. The highest estimates put the game's budget at around $265 million. Cyberpunk 2077, with all of its ambition, cost around $313 million to make, maybe showing everyone that money doesn't necessarily equal quality. And the only game that rivals Genshin Impact in its cost is one that hasn't even come out yet. Star Citizen, which is currently sitting at $400 million. There's a chance this might actually be the most expensive game right now, since Genshin's numbers are estimates. But there's no doubt that sooner or later, at this pace, Genshin will overtake that cost. And who knows, maybe Star Citizen never comes out, so it's not even a video game to begin with. I've always been very impressed with Genshin Impact since release. When the game first came out, I thought it was lacking a few things. I thought co-op would be a lot better than it was, and I wanted to know what the end game would be in the future. Why were we leveling? up and building characters? Would there be raids in the future? Because the Abyss alone really wasn't doing it for me as far as endgame goes. Later I realized Genshin was going for something completely different, something that didn't fit the mold of big MMORPGs or gacha games even. And this became more and more obvious with each expansion. Dragonspine, Inazuma, The Chasm, the whole archipelago that they put so much work into and just made it a limited time release. And now Sumeru. The amount of work of new story content, new mechanics, new characters and the the quality of it all always felt too good to be true. How come all of this was being released for free? Unlike every single gacha that I've played in the past, Genshin doesn't gate your quest progress behind stamina, behind limited resources. Everything is just there to be played, like a normal video game. There are challenges that will require higher leveled characters, but if you just want to solve puzzles, do story quests, explore new areas, participate in the limited time events, you don't have to deal with any of that stuff. You could just play Genshin for free, as an open world world adventure game, not a gacha. And it was always mind-blowing how much there was behind each update. And now it all makes sense. I mean, I knew Genshin was doing well, I knew the developers were loaded, but record-breaking? I would have never imagined. But the numbers get even more impressive, because they're not throwing money out the window. Reportedly, Genshin is making around 3.7 billion dollars every year. Yep, you heard that right. 3.7 billion dollars. In the face of that number, spending 500 million really sounds like nothing. Genshin Impact is insanely profitable, and they managed to do so while keeping the free-to-play player base happy. I think keeping most aspects of the game free of gacha systems was a very smart move, where most developers would create trappings and stop player progress, encouraging players to engage with the market, either by grinding characters to a higher level or by implementing a stamina system that actively stops players from playing the game. Genshin just said, look, we have a pull system, if you want new characters, you don't gotta use it, but it's there if you want it. Also, we made a progression very gacha-based. You can take it slow for free or faster if you pay or farm some stuff, but honestly, nothing has a level requirement. Just keep your world level low if all you care about is exploration and story, we'll keep the gacha stuff on the side. And if there's a lesson to be taken from Genshin Impact, I really think that's it. This design decision led to more free-to-play folks happy, which leads to a bigger player base and ultimately more people playing, which means more whales. Even if it's all optional, the priority was making a good game and then the numbers will come. With a player base this big, even if 0.1% of them are whales, the game will be fine. Unfortunately, you know the lesson a lot of publishers are gonna take is the wrong one, which is, yo, these gacha games, they make money. Which, true, they do, they could just make a lot more, as Genshin is showing us. Take Tower of Fantasy, for instance. Now, the only reason I bring this game up is because it seemed like it was going for a very similar thing as Genshin Impact. But from day one, it was very clear that it had a ton of barriers that Genshin wouldn't have. Chests that are locked for another 20 hours, so I gotta come back to the game later if I wanna open a thing that's right in front of me. Come back tomorrow to continue the story. The gacha trappings are directly in the way of the combat 
content. Now, I don't want to bash Tower of Fantasy. After all, I dropped it after playing for one day, so it's not like I have a very informed opinion. But the impression it left on me was that instead of looking at the player base that enjoys Genshin more than most of the games they play, they looked at the player base that always has a complaint. And they're everywhere. I cannot make a single video or release a single tweet without a bunch of comments about how this game has no content, which is insane to me. I'm currently over 25 hours into Sumeru and I've just barely scratched the surface. Look at the size of this thing. This is just as big as Mondstadt or Liyue and it's just the first section of Sumeru. Uh, they're still gonna expand this even more. No wonder developing expansions is more expensive than the initial game. They are releasing full games for free with every major expansion. And it wasn't a bad 25 hours so far. I'm still loving the game. All the new puzzle mechanics, the new elemental reactions. The story is so good in this one too. So good in fact that if I don't have enough videos on the channel this week, it's probably because I play too much Genshin instead of working. And not even being that productive in Genshin either, just playing around with a new music system. Because, you know, this game wasn't Zelda enough yet. But once you're finished with that, there's nothing to do. But wait, isn't that all video games? Always has been. Now, obviously, not all games need to be made for the same audience. That would be boring. So I'm actually very happy Tower of Fantasy is out. I'm happy it exists. And people are enjoying it. I, I think. I actually have no idea what the word on the street is. I, I blocked that game out of my mind. But it does seem like a better gacha than Genshin Impact. I agree with most of the community's complaints every time I see them. Once you're done with the content, it's boring to log in every day, do the commissions. We're so tired of doing the same commissions over and over. We do have the Sumeru commissions now, but those will grow old in time. You spend your residence so fast if you're trying to max out a character and some days you just won't make any progress because you've got no good artifacts. I agree, but that's after hundreds of hours playing Genshin Impact. Maybe take a break and play something else until the next update. It's really hard for someone new to start Genshin now because if they pull for a character that has upgrade materials in Sumeru, they're screwed. That character is not getting leveled up for the next 200 hours of playtime. Absolutely, that's something they need to look into. The pity system sucks! Other gacha games do it so much better! Brother, you have lost me. Three 3.7 billion every year. They do it better than anyone else. And maybe it's not better for the players, sure, but it's better for the business. And if that is the cost of getting all of this stuff for free, yeah, I'll take a bad gacha any day over a good one. And given how big the numbers are, maybe Genshin isn't so bad as a gacha after all. Maybe it's actually the best gacha. And the one model that other games should be looking at. It managed to draw in players who stayed away from gacha games, like Battle Royales managed to draw in Dragon Ball collaborations. And that's because all of that stuff, all of the gacha, exists on the side. It's optional. You don't have to deal with it. I just started a side quest in Sumeru, and I've heard very conflicting things about it. This quest is supposedly 9 hours long if you are just skipping through the dialogue, which I usually don't do if the story is interesting. Still, it's a really long world quest, probably the longest that Genshin has ever had. And on one hand, I'm hearing that this quest is great. There's a great storyline through it all. It unlocks new puzzles for you. It's the thing that gave me this ocarina. It changes the map of Sumeru itself, unlocking new areas. But on the other hand, I'm hearing it's boring. It takes too long. But at least I got some primals off of it. One side is enjoying the content, the other side is after the rewards. And that's a side that from now on, I'm just gonna have to ignore. I love this game and I'm really happy for its success. It makes me feel like I wasn't crazy every time I criticize the gacha for being too intrusive, for getting in the way of me enjoying the game underneath. It shows me that there are a lot more people who think like me. It's proof that if you put the game first, every business model can work. And you can really feel the love that they put into this game. That Archon quest brought me pretty close to tears, which is something that doesn't happen in video games very often. I don't know, it bored me to hell low-key. I didn't fucking ask! This game has its hooks on me, and somehow, I suspect this wasn't the last time I talked about it on the channel. It certainly wasn't the last time I played it. I don't know how to end this one, so please, just enjoy the song that I made.